okay? Let me read the verse. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. The problem with the misinterpretation of this verse out of context is what we call over-realized eschatology. It's very similar to healing. The Lord can medically or supernaturally intervene where medical science fails, even at the modern time. The Lord can clinically or medically cause something to happen supernaturally to bring about a healing. But unless the rapture happens first, that person is still going to become aged and give up the ghost eventually anyway. You may have a partial foretaste of what is promised in this life with healing, but the ultimate healing we are promised will be in the resurrection. It will be fully realized in the resurrection or the rapture, depending on if you're asleep in the Lord or if you are with the Lord at the time he comes spiritually and reunited with your body or if you're simply raptured. It's a future event. Healing is in the atonement, but it's guaranteed in the future, in the resurrection. It is also physical, but it will be the case in a much improved body for a thousand years in the millennium. Well, prosperity is the same. The meek shall inherit the earth. We don't get it now in this life or this world. That is dominion theology. That is, again, a form of over-realized eschatology. We will be co-heirs with Christ in the millennial kingdom and into eternity with riches unfathomable. These things are a future divine promise, absolutely. They will be the reality. Now, that is not to say that God cannot to a degree, even to an abundant degree, bless believers financially or materially in this life for his purposes. He can. We read in Romans 12, there's a gift of philanthropy. There are people who God prospers them materially and financially because he has called them to the ministry of philanthropy, to giving money away to fund missions, evangelism, helping the poor, the persecuted church, etc. No one says that God cannot heal people now, and no one says that God cannot prosper people now. It is the money-preaching greed merchants, the mammon worshippers pretending to be Christian, the word faith preachers who are telling you that financial prosperity is in the atonement and that healing is always in the atonement. It is also the mongers of dominion theology who are telling you such things that we are going to gain the financial and material control of the world in its present state by conquering it before Christ comes. No, it is in his return. It is at the resurrection and rapture that these things are realized. Yes, he did, in addition to our salvation, acquire a divine guarantee of good health and of wealth for the millennium, for eternity, but not necessarily for this life, for this world, that is Satan's kingdom. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us obviously practicality dictates that's not a possibility the books are there they're available they're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website moriel.org but in this day of Kindle and electronic books they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle Kindle the three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast, 
Shadows of the Beast, how the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, the Glum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.